Is it recording? Yes. I am Coyote. I said Coyote, not the scroungy cat eater skulking by the corner, not the failed predator, moth-eaten pest, or loser cartoon, but the myth, the god, the immoral, I mean immortal, trickster, famous in Native American lore. The Aztecs knew me as trickster, Hugh Hugh Coyotal, calling me Old Old Coyote even then, although I was only 12,714 years old. I was the god of merriment, a singer, a dancer, a drummer. I was a shapeshifter changing into human and animal shapes, manipulating others, hoarding chocolate. Those were the days. The people were inspired by my night songs and had exuberant chorales to imitate my own joyful voice. Sometimes mournful, you know, but I was always present. I was the patron of song and dance, as well as festivity and alcohol, sex and promiscuity. I was always playful, even when the play was deadly, uh, to others anyway. Uh, slowly I moved north, then south, east, west, north again, to spread my lessons to the Nez Perce, Shoshone, Kwak Waka Waka, Lakota, Winnebago, Cherokee, Apache, Cato, Calusa, Blackfoot, Koryak, Tinglet, almost everybody. I was everywhere on the continent helping and teaching humans. But I'm old now, or it seems that I'm old, living here at the Golden Evening Tide Rest Home in Bradenton, Florida. Tired and then retired with some of my friends. Otter, badger, dwarf owl. Fox has to work harder now to restore me to life or keep me alive in the first place. I think of retiring. But I want to tell my stories once more before my voice fails and my hindquarters get too weak before 3D movies and television rob you listeners of all your imagination and recreative listening abilities. Oh, I still have my own teeth, by the way. I'm still vital. So this is my story. At first, Coyote was a name desired and sought after by all animals, but then it was given to me by the Great Spirit, who also entrusted me with the task of protecting all the people from the monsters of the earth. Monsters who ate people, kept them in the dark, chased them into cactuses, cactus, cacti, whatever, and mocked them as ignorant weaklings. I, Coyote, was the one who was always there to save the people, to trick them into realizing that they were ignorant weaklings, trapped in the dark and poked by thorns by monsters. Once I tricked a horrible people-eating monster into eating his own flesh, letting the people escape through the hole. I also tricked trees into letting people see, see fire at night, use fire at night. I tricked cactuses into giving up their fruit so people could eat. Well, I may have tricked some people into having sex with me, but that was only to teach them to be cautious. I may have abandoned my responsibilities when I was hungry or tired, but that was only to encourage self-reliance in others. Some animals accused me of being a monster saying that only a monster could save people from other monsters. Well, I never claimed to be a monster, or a god, or a trickster, although others always said I was. I'm just an ordinary coyote with a big heart, who wants to help others. And if I help myself or satisfy my urges or needs by doing that, who is to say that I'm really selfish or monstrous? No amount of sacrifice, or food, or sex, is too great to keep me from protecting people, as well as animals and plants, from the real monsters. Then again, when I was most successful, people stopped telling stories of me to T. Sir Young. They stopped talking about me. They stopped believing in me or worshipping me. They started telling dreary stories of machines and actors instead. They shot monsters with guns, big automatic guns, and then shot bison and wolves and bear and then each other. Many gods were ignored or forgotten, so I wasn't alone. Just a few big, distant, abstract, remote gods got any lip service. Things really looked bleak for the wisdom and goodness to be learned from Coyote. Finally, in the 1960s and 70s, things started to change. Some people remembered the traditional wisdom. They talked about us, calling on us for guidance. By then I realized that there were new monsters to be fought. The Great Spirit had not realized 
that monsters could be born from human desires and stupidity. And so they were always being born. They couldn't be vanquished once and for all. I realized that people still needed me to demonstrate the badness of greed and stupidity. Great Spirit himself still needed me to fight these new monsters that arose from the, the dark side of human consciousness. There were new monsters threatening people, machine, bottom line, chaos, weather, progress, M but monsters that I could defeat with my unique skills and powers. Suddenly I was more popular than John Lennon and funnier than Groucho Marx. Old gods such as Rongo Rongo, Toth, Legba, Monkey King, Gai, and others were sort of being resurrected and honored as people looked to solutions for their new problems. New gods such as humanity, media, celebrity, and corporation were being born, flexing their muscles and making converts. I call them the Supremes. Some humans such as Forrest Trump and Donald Chevrolet declared themselves as rich and powerful as gods. The new hybrid deities rose out of the confusion. Hank Raw, a loser worker, texter gamer, or green bicycle. All of these idols were trying to dominate people and nature. But only I, Coyote, could expose and exploit the weaknesses of others. Although I cannot always control my bowels, I could control the new monsters and keep the universe in balance. Listen now as the stories of my heroism calm and teach you and even perhaps entertain you. Story number one. Coyote invents invents television or couch poet Cheeto. Coming into the canyon surrounded by great rocks, Coyote, that's me, saw some children playing and figured that they would want to play with him, that's me. But he was wrong. They ignored him, me, and went on running and hiding. Coyote thought, what kind of game would they play with me, Coyote? So I went and I found a cedar tree by the creek and made a few beads out of its berries colored them with blue and yellow and put them on strings. When I saw the children again, I waved them these beads and spoke to them, but they paid no attention. They acted like I was some kind of adult. I, Coyote, did not like this. I, I needed to be noticed and laughed at. So I went to a distant village and traded water to Tobacco Woman for tobacco. I knew it wouldn't rain and she could trade with Corn Man later. Back in the canyon that evening, I made a fire and waited for these careless children. When they saw me, I lit my pipe and waved it at them, saying, Hey, look here, big fire, smoke, great fun. But they continued their running game, and as I watched them and smoked voluminously myself, my tail swept into the fire and ignited. I yipped a lot, but I knew they must have smiled. Uh, but it was not enough. I had to travel to a distant village of the people colored like ashes. I made a thing those kids would never resist. I paid for my help with promises of fame, knowing that the bargain was good, because fame is nothing. I put it in a mysterious box and carried it for many weeks and many miles. Now, at their own village, I tapped into the current of the earth, displayed the box at the edge of the well. It was on when the children came out of their hogans, and they sat down beside me. I was triumphant. Then we all watched in silence as the roadrunner left Coyote in the dust. Story 2. 